gonna test the microphone. Get it, but the do. Right. Well, hey, everybody, it's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com back here today. Thank you so much for joining me here again on Tuesday, bro. Tuesday, I got a great program planned out for you guys. It's going to be about an hour. We're going to cover some review -y stuff. There's a new thing entering the queue. There are two things leaving the queue, which means when I get back from shit, when I get back from Europe, ha, then we're gonna have two brand new things entering the queue. This is gonna be the last Tuesday Bro Tuesday video for a while. This weekend, um, I am leaving. <laughs> On Friday, I am leaving and I am flying to Europe and I am spending two weeks in Europe and when I get back, everything's gonna get back to normal. While I'm in Europe, I'm gonna be doing sort of daily vlogs, not daily, but at least every other day, I want to upload a video to YouTube. Um, some of it's gonna be traveling, some of it's gonna be the event, some of it might just be me hanging out with Kent, like in his bedroom, like just me talking to Kent for like 10 minutes. I feel like that would be cool. I feel like that would be fun. But yeah, this is the last Tuesday Bro Tuesday video for a while. But like I said, we got some reviews. We got viewer mail. We got getting to know Grim Green. Um, two things leaving the queue. Two things leaving the queue. And uh, one new thing joining us this week. So let's just, you know what, let's just dive in. I don't have a whole heck of a lot of news this week, but I do have one article. I try my best to gather as much news as I can. There's news always constantly, always constantly happening and trying to split up that news between Tuesday Bro Tuesday, the vlog on Thursday, the Culture of Clouds podcast, as well as the Friday live streaming show that I do with Kevin and Jay DeLuca on the Vaping CC YouTube, which I will post a link to in the description. Sometimes news gets a little bit thin, but I did find a great article on the Americans for Tax Reform website. The, the headline of the article is sensationalist. It is clickbait uh, to the maximum. It says, vaping claimed its first victim one year ago. What? And this is a quick little article, so I'm just gonna read the whole thing, but I will post a link down in the description for you to read it yourself, as well to as well as sharing it on social media, on your Facebooks and whatnot. So the title of the article is Vaping Claimed First Victim One Year Ago. Electronic cigarettes are dangerous. So dangerous, in fact, that they're banned from checked bags on airplanes. So dangerous that no one under the age of 18 can purchase them legally nearly anywhere. So dangerous that the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, spent years trying to ban them. In fact, e-cigarettes claimed their first victim just one year ago. Elizabeth Liz Thompson was a Democratic member of the New Mexico House of Representatives who had a career as a pediatric physical therapist before serving in the legislature beginning in 2013. But Representative Thompson didn't die. Voters kicked her out of office for her baseless assault on vapor products and the consumers and voters who use them. E-cigarettes are banned from checked bags because they contain lithium ion batteries, which have been banned from checked bags since 2008. Every reasonable person and business supports restricting the sale of nicotine containing products to minors. The FDA's overreach is an extension of the Obama administration's anti-public health agenda, dead set on protecting protecting the government ex the government's excise tax collections on traditional cigarettes over the objection of some so-called public health groups last year new mexico banned the sale of e-cigarette to minors sure some, like Representative Thompson, wanted the products stripped from the hands of adults and teens alike. They wanted to sell the products to sin taxes, limit the types of products available, and ban their use in public places. In October, Vapor Business and Consumers organized a sizable group to attend a hearing in Santa Fe. Representative Thompson was among those who attacked public health officials like Dr. Joel Nitzkin and her request to expose the dangers of e-cigarettes. Vapors discovered soon after Representative Thompson's assault on the products they attribute to saving their lives that she was involved in one of the most closely contested races in New Mexico. 
her opponent, Republican Conrad James, was a more market-oriented candidate, open to science and facts, and not jaded by his huge hunger for more tax dollars and control over consumer choices. Vapors made a significant Vapors made significant financial contributions, knocked on doors, made phone calls, and were involved in a significant get out and vote effort in the days leading up to the election. Financial contributions were so great, James started turning down contributions out of a lack of need. Representative Liz Liz Thompson was defeated by Conrad James by 374 votes, and Republicans won control of the New Mexico House for the first time in 60 years because of vapors. So next time you hear about the dangers of electronic cigarettes from Democrats, Republicans, or the press, remember Liz Thompson of New Mexico. She became the first victim of these dangerous products just one year ago. So it's a little bit of a sensationalist headline, vaping's first victim, but really Liz Thompson, Democrat, New Mexico, anti-vaping, anti-small business, pro-regulation, vapors, voted her out of office and instead voted for Conrad James, the Republican who is, you know, less taxes, more open-minded, more open-minded to science, not anti-vaping. Tell me again that vapors can't make a difference. Tell me, try to tell me. I just thought that was a really fantastic article. I think it's great that the vapors of New Mexico uh, sort of banded together, contributions, knocking on doors, making phone calls, and voted the person who is against them out of office. We have to remember, we have to remember that these representatives, these senators, all these government officials, they work for us. We forget that a lot of the time. It's not as hard as you think it is to just spread some good information, to inform yourself, and to, yes, absolutely vote your hopes. You have to vote your hopes. You have to. So yeah, I'll put a link to that down in the description to this video. Um, Additionally, I just want to plug uh, mine and Kevin and Jay DeLuca and Matt from Suck My Mod. We talk about advocacy every Friday morning, 9 a.m. on the West Coast, noon on the East Coast, a different time, I'm assuming somewhere in the middle bit there. But yeah, me, Kevin, Jay DeLuca, and uh, Matt from Suck My Mod, we're on the Vaping CC uh, YouTube. I'll post a link down in the description every Friday. Of course, I'm not going to be there for the next two weeks, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't watch the show. It's a really funny show, and Jay and Kevin and Matt are all really good guys, and they have a lot of good conversations on there. Additionally, the fundraiser, the Right to Vape fundraiser, is over $200,000 now. Over $200,000 freaking thousand dollars right now. So keep it up. Keep it going. Keep keep this going. It's amazing. This is one of the greatest things I've ever seen within the vapor industry. I've never seen this many people donate this much money to a cause before. And it's really, really encouraging for the few, for the future of, of vaping. So I'm going to post a link down in the description as well to the right to vape fundraiser. It's on generosity.com. Go spread it around, share it around, uh, donate money, get people to donate money. If we could go over $250,000 on this, that would be, I mean, that would be great. I mean, this isn't going to like change the law suddenly or, or, or get rid of the FDA or, or anything like that, but it is a huge step in the right direction and it will be an unbelievable help and asset to those people like the AVA, like Greg Connolly, uh, you know, like right to be smoke free, like the right to vape. Uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's going to be really good for those organizations who can actually move forward and move into these arenas and, and, and change laws and change this legislation. But uh, yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. So that's going to wrap up. That's going to wrap up the news. I think it's time to get into some vape stuff. Stuff. So first up on the vape stuff stuff, that's right. Avocado 24. I've been having... I've been having a really freaking great time with this tank. Like I said last week, I don't think I would have appreciated this tank. Like if I had done a review for this tank a month ago, even two months ago, 
I wouldn't have appreciated it. I would have not enjoyed using it. I would have not understood how it worked. But now that there's more RDTAs, things like the Limitless, things like the Azeroth, things like that V-God Trick Tank Pro, which I've been, been vaping a fuck ton of, I kind of understand a bit more how they work and I kind of understand what I desire and what I don't desire in these devices, like what I want to see and what I don't want to see. Unfortunately, even though I've been getting a really good performance and really good flavor from this Avocado 24, it does have a couple drawbacks that I'm not super, super excited about. The Avocado 24 is going to be leaving the queue, so we are going to do a quick short uppy closey time when we get towards the end here. But basically, I put a round wire build in here. I put, uh, I put a basically, I put a Ruby Roo build in here. It's around a three millimeter uh, post. I keep punching my desk for some reason. It's around a three millimeter post. I used 24 gauge nichrome, anarchist wire. I did an eight wrap. It came out to 0.28 ohms vapors. Vapors like crazy. And all I did was wick it like I've been wicking other RDTAs. I just wicked it through the middle and I stuffed the the tips, the very, just the very tip tips of those wicks down into the juice little reservoir tank down here. Great. The vape I'm getting from it is just great. To get that really good avocado flavor that everybody's talking about, I do have to turn the airflow down about halfway. And so I've been thinking about this. I've been wondering, why is everybody going bananas for like this avocado flavor? Why does everyone say that the avocado has like such good flavor? I don't know. It has fine flavor. It has highly decent flavor. If I had to rate it on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being like, the most insanely pungent, crazy, over-the-top flavor that you could possibly experience that may not even exist yet in vaping. This is like a seven and a half. It's like a 7.25. It's good, it's good flavor, but it's very much like dripper flavor. It's no different than the flavor I get from the Goon, or the flavor I get from the Twisted Messes, or the flavor I get from the Kennedy, or the flavor I get from the Recoil. It's RDA flavor. So I think that people notice a higher flavor on the avocado if they move from sub-ohm tanks to the avocado, if that makes any sense. Because sub-ohm tanks, while they have very decent flavor, it's generally a little bit less intense than it is on a dripper. So if you're moving from like sub ohm tanks and the avocado is the first thing you build on, yeah, you're gonna notice a huge spike in flavor. And that's where I think this whole like, bro, the flavor thing is coming from. It's got some really nice performance. It's got a nice, easy velocity style deck to build on. It's really easy to wick. You can, I mean, there's multiple ways to wick it. I just poke my wicks down and through the little holes. Good, good to go. The thing with these RDTAs, you have to keep them upright. You just have to keep them upright. And I've just, I've found this with all of these sort of Genesis style drip tanks. If you leave it on its side, juice is just gonna go where it's not supposed to go and it's going to leak out the air holes. It happened to me just the other day with the Azeroth. I set it down for some reason horizontally and it just, the entire tank emptied out onto my juice. Huge bummer. Have to keep them upright. And real quick, before we go into uppy closey time, the airflow on this, it just spins. It just spins like crazy. Just, it doesn't lock into any sort of position and there's like, there's almost no resistance, at least on the avocado I have. Once again, I can only speak to the products that are in front of me. It doesn't lock into place, it doesn't snap, and the resistance is very, very low. So oftentimes, I'll find myself adjusting it halfway and vaping it and moving it and doing things with it, and then I'll look and my airflow will either be completely closed or completely open. And I go, no, avocado, I wanted you about halfway. That's where I want it to stay. My airflow control doesn't really stay in position. It is set up for a dual coil or a single coil, which we're gonna talk about when we get to the uppy closey time. But yeah, okay, fuck it, let's just do it now. Uppy closey time, boom. <clears throat> All right, yeehaw. Well, this is the Avocado 24 torn completely down. I managed to take it apart with a build still in it, which is kind of a difficult thing to do because you're removing pins. You're removing the positive pin from the center. Do you see the center there? 
there's that hole that's where the positive pin goes of course everything's going to start falling down all over the place let's let's set this all aside let's assemble it so you have to attach the o-rings to the top and bottom where your tank is going to sit there's only one way that they can go in you see that little lip that needs to go inside the tank right there additionally you can install the o-ring right there sort of on where's the base sort of on there and then it'll Boop, it'll fit in. Uh, it's, it's easier just to put the O-ring on the base. See, that's where the O-ring wanted to be anyway. So once you get your O-rings installed, you kind of twist this together just like this, and you're basically closing off any and all access uh, to, your, to your tank, to anything like that. All you're left with is your deck, and then you have this dumb swingy door right here. And this swingy door is where you're going to be filling up your juice. That is a very small hole, especially if you're using, I don't know, a glass dripper bottle. Other bottles like unicorn bottles will work absolutely just fine. But anything else, glass dripper bottles, even like the bottles that we sell the Epiclouds in with the stubby nose, those do not fit in there and it becomes kind of a pain to fill up. Additionally, I hate this door. I hate this dumb little door that's held on by a dumb little squishy silicone piece. It's hard to open. It's hard to close. I never know if it's staying or if it's slowly shredding those little holes right there. But either way, this door is dumb. I think this, do this door is a dumb design. Then you're going to need to install your 510 pin so it actually fires. It's just a flathead screw, so it's, it's relatively easy to get in there and get tight. And you'll see it sort of coming up through the middle there. Crank it down, crank it down. Taking a look at that 510 pin, yeah, it appears to uh, protrude pretty nicely. Surrounded by a peak insulator, I would feel comfortable using this on a hybrid mod. Not that you would ever really need to, but if you wanted to, you could. Getting a closer look at that deck as well. Velocity style deck that's just a simple round wire 24 gauge, uh, you know, nichrome anarchist build. And then there's your holes. So, what I did is I measured these holes out to about three millimeters, and then that's what I built these two because you're going to need to wick through this, and then you're going to need to put your wicks through those little holes. At least that's the way that I did it. A lot of people just tuck them under and tuck them over those holes and then tip it upside down when they want more liquid to their coils. Personally, I like just stuffing just the tips, just the tips of the cotton through those little holes so they're somewhat in the tank. And that way, when you're vaping it and you're tilting it at your face, the juice is kind of going to your wicks and it's eventually going to get to your coils. This setup for me with these three, now that's 2.5 millimeters. I can tell just by looking. These 2.5 millimeter coils wicked it through nice and tight through there and uh, I had no problems with wicking at all. Now for the ease of putting on a top cap, I had to take off that second O-ring. I could not get this top cap to sit flush with a second O-ring on there. It just wouldn't do it. And one O-ring, honestly, it's strong. That's enough to hold this all together. Additionally, they do include this little jobber right here, which will let you switch it into a single coil. You basically, well, I'd have to take out one of my coils. But you basically put these O-rings through those little wick holes right there. It's going to direct some air through here right at your single coil. It works Okay, this doesn't seat in there very well at all. I found the only way really to keep it in place is to jam it in there and then put the top cap on. The top cap really helps hold this in place. I just, I never bothered. I just went right for a single coil or right for a dual coil right away. Additionally, the top cap here, here's your adjustable airflow, spins very, very freely. There's not much resistance at all, but you can go from wide, wide open little tiny little hole on that side, little tiny little hole on that side as well. Additionally, the next little tiny hole, that tiny hole, is the single coil. So over here it's blocked, and over here you have a tiny hole. So yeah, that's the airflow. Remember, take off one of those O-rings. Just do it. It makes your life so much easier. You can pop this back on, and uh, yeah, dude, avocado, 24, top to bottom. Let's get back out to normal view for the final judgment, I guess. So yeah, final hammer of judgment here on the Avocado 24. It's getting a thumbs like this. It's like, it's not quite a thumbs up. It's got some things that I don't really super enjoy. I don't enjoy that the AFC ring isn't super secure. It just kind of spins around. I hate the juice filling method. I hate 
opening up that little hinged door and you got a tiny little hole and you go and you kind of fill your juice in there and then you close the tiny little hinged door. There are much better ways to use that. Additionally, the Avocado 24 doesn't break down very easily when you want to take it all the way apart and clean it. You're taking pins out of the bottom and you're unscrewing this and you're doing all this stuff. It's not as simple to break down and clean when in the event that, that happens. But honestly, you don't really need your vape budget hands for it. It's about 35 bucks. I'll post a link down in the description to Origin Vape where they have it in stock in stainless steel or black. 34 bucks, sure. Now, I don't really, here's the thing. The avocado has been great for me. Don't get me wrong. Good flavor, good performance. I like most every other RDTA better than this. I like the V-God Trick Tank Pro more than this. I like the Limitless RDTA more than this. And I like the Azeroth RDTA more than this. If you have avocado and you like it and you use it and you love it, done. That's boom, you're good, you're done. If you're in the market for an RDTA, Eh, I would probably look elsewhere other than the Avocado 24. There are other, better, easier to use uh, RDTAs out there. So yeah, whatever. Buy Avocado 24. See ya, you're gone out of the queue. So last week, the Relo RX 2 slash 3 joined us, and I have just been using this like crazy. One of my main gripes, I guess, with this device was how comfortable is it to hold? It's oddly shaped the this weird diamond like pyramid without a top shape isn't a very ergonomic design the the, the relo the relo relo with the pardon me with the rounded back much more ergonomic design you can put it in your palm and you can hit it with your finger i don't know why i'm so burpy and gassy you can put it in your palm and you can hit it with your finger this one i find myself holding it like this i find myself i don't know how to describe this but it does feel very, very ergonomic. Now this is with the two battery case on the back, not the three batteries, the two batteries. That's how I've been using it because we've used Relos with three batteries. I mean, there's been two versions of the Relo with three batteries in it. So I want to use the Relo RX2 slash three with two batteries in it, dual 18650. What else do you hold like this? I kind of put my thumb against the back, right? Thumb against the back. Hold it like this, your finger's gonna line up with this little swoosh mark, finger on the button. Great, this is really, really comfortable to hold. Been using it with that V God Trick Tank Pro. This isn't about that though, we're talking about the Relo. Overall, I've really been enjoying it. I think I'm gonna give this another week. I think this is gonna leave the queue on the next Tuesday Bro Tuesday video. I just wanna spend some more time with it in my hand. I've been getting used to the interface, I've been getting used to the buttons, I've been getting used to popping the back on and off, which is kind of a struggle. It's a little bit weird sometimes to press this button, have the back pop off, and then there's these hooks. There's like hooks up here that you have to like scoop into the mod. You can't just go boom, or you can't just go boom. You kind of have to press and get those hooks. You'll feel them seat into the right place. And then you kind of squeeze it down on the bottom. And when you squeeze it down on the bottom, there's no click. There's nothing to let you know that the base is engaged other than it just doesn't pop up anymore. I would love like to push that bottom in and feel like a very satisfying like click sound. So far, been really enjoying the Relo RX2 slash 3, but uh, yeah, I think we're going to give this another week. I just want to spend some more time with it. Um, I am a finger button presser. That's how I press buttons on mods. I like it. I just use my fingers. A lot of people don't do that. They use it with their thumbs. So what I'm going to try to do is use this more with my thumb and see how comfortable and ergonomic it actually is to use. So yeah, there you go. All right, all right, vape stuff stuff. Let's do some, uh, you know what? Let's just dive right in, getting to know Grim Green. A lot of people have been sending some really great questions. Nick at GrimGreen.com if you have any questions for getting to know Grim Green. A lot of like, some of them are like really touchy subjects. Like, what do you think about Christianity? And like, I'm like, well, I'm not sure if like, 
that's a road that I want to go down, especially on a vape related YouTube channel. But I did have a guy, Zach, who wrote to me uh, in August and said, um, uh, Zach wrote in and said, I would love to know what got you into YouTubing, uh, what made you want to start uh, making the vlog about vaping on YouTube, and who, if anybody, were your influences in the YouTube vape world. Cool, very cool, very cool, legitimate question. I started doing YouTube videos. I feel like this is a story I've told a lot, a lot. But I have a lot of new subscribers who may have never heard this before, so here we go. This is for you. I started reviewing vape stuff back in 2009. I got my first e-cig January 2009. I think my first review video went up in February or March of 2009. And back in 2009, vaping was a very, very underground, underground thing. It was like the most underground thing that I've ever been a part of. And I've been to like, you know, obscure black metal shows in people's basements, like even more underground than that. In my town, I guarantee you at the time, there was nobody else vaping. We had the ECF forum where there were maybe a few thousand people nationwide who were vaping back in 2009. And honestly, I had no plans whatsoever of making YouTube like a serious thing in my life. All I wanted to do was tell people about vaping. All I wanted to do was tell people that I had just gone 48 hours without a cigarette because of this dumb little battery. I was so excited. I can't remember being that excited about anything in my life because smoking is always a struggle, right? You always smoke and you always feel just a little bit guilty about it. And after every cigarette, that thought runs through your head where you go, God, I should really quit. And you don't. You just you just don't do it. And so I had paused my smoking for about two years. I was going down to Las Vegas with my brother. I knew I was going to smoke. I got on Google. I Googled fake cigarettes. Boom, the rest is history. I bought a, a kit for way too much money that didn't work. And then I bought another kit right after that, the DSE 901. And that was it. I was so excited about vaping that I got on YouTube. I was like, I thought in my head, how am I going to tell as many people as I can about this? I mean, I'm just a guy living in Nevada. I don't even have a Facebook. I don't have any social media. Like, how am I going to tell people about how great this is? So I fired up my horrible, horrible Microsoft webcam on my horrible, horrible computer, and the videos were all out of focus and terrible. And I just started talking about this stupid little e-cig that I got. And I was overjoyed to do it. And I kept buying more stuff and reviewing more stuff. And it was like about a month into that about buying stuff and reviewing stuff that people actually started like commenting, like commenting on ECF and commenting on my videos. And it took me about a year of doing that. And then I, I got up to like 500 subscribers and I was like, fuck yeah, dude. 500 subscribers, this is amazing. This is the most fun I've ever had. And I loved getting into like doing the graphics and doing the intros and having good content and talking about stuff and researching stuff. And I, I got off to a good start and I'm like, all right, well, this is gonna be my schedule. This is gonna be my cue. I have to keep track of everything that I have. I have to be organized. If I'm gonna keep doing this, I have to do it right. I didn't really have any influences in the vape world. At that time, there was one other person who I just shouted out last week in the vlog, Scott, I get you 69. He was the only other guy doing vape videos. And he was obviously, literally, my only influence for vaping videos. Um, there's kind of become this like, uh, you know, uh, template, I guess, for vape videos. It's like, here's the review. Here's the device. We're going to go up close, do up close stuff. We're going to get back out and then we're going to talk about it some more. And then I'm going to say whether I like it or not. Like that's the template. Like that's the pattern for vape reviews. And that's why I started the Tuesday Bro Tuesday because I just couldn't do that anymore. I spent seven and a half years reviewing vape stuff. Seven and a half years using that template. And I just couldn't do it anymore. It felt like work to me. It felt awful. I hated doing reviews, but I sucked it up and I did it because people wanted to see it. And it came to a point where I'm like, no longer, 
no longer. I want to have fun. I want to be creative. I want to do my own shit. And that's where Tuesday Bro Tuesday came from. I love talking vape. I love talking about devices and liquids and it's fun. Like I, it's a labor of love, but that's where the Tuesday Bro Tuesday video came from. What was your original question? Because I happened to get off topic. Yeah, that's so that's how I started on YouTube. Um, the vlog just happened because I didn't want to clutter up my reviews with needless information. I wanted my review to be, hi, I'm Grim Green. Let's review this. V-God, 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 trick tank, trick tank, trick tank. Here's the things. Here's the things. Great. It's good. It's not good. It's great. I don't know. Bye. Like I want my, re- I wanted my reviews to be just so clear and concise and to the point. I didn't want to clutter them up with a bunch of other malarkey and talking about, oh, well today, I, you know, I went to the park and I drank a beer and I went to the ocean and sorry, I've been gone. And so I created a weekly video where I could put all that other stuff, like stuff that wasn't related directly to my reviews, other stuff like news, like news items I wanted to talk about. And so I just kind of started forming over time, like what this vlog would look like. Like now, of course there's news. And then I started doing the vlog and I'm like, I really want to talk about beer. So I added like the beer segment and I used to talk about music in my vlogs. I had a music segment where I was talking about like bands I liked and music I liked and new music and stuff like that. So the vlog came out of necessity of not wanting to clutter up my videos, but it kind of became its own thing. Like it grew and shrank on its own. So yeah, that's the history of the vlog. There are a lot of YouTubers now that I do, uh, I do really enjoy li- uh, enjoy watching. Obviously, big YouTubers like Philip DeFranco. Uh, he's brilliant. He, he's so smart and he's very concise with the way he speaks and he's just built an empire for himself. I like Mr. Sunday movies. I like Chris Stuckman. I mean, there's a lot of like nerdy geeky stuff that I watch on YouTube as well. But yeah, all, a lot of the really popular successful YouTubers are obviously very inspirational for me. I love being a content creator. I love doing YouTube and being creative and being able to talk about things that I love like beer and news and vaping and good and all this stuff. So yeah, that's kind of where the vlog came from. Thank you, Zach, so much for, uh, for, for, yeah, for, uh, you know, sending a, sending a question to getting to know Grim Green. So after that whole stuff of stuff right now, I don't know why I like to say stuff so much right now, we're going to get back into some more vape stuff, stuff. Fucking Heracles Pro. Do you see this juice coming down the side? Juice. Can I tilt you? Yeah, do you see all this juice pouring out of the Heracles Pro? This is the fourth ceramic coil head. And now I have juice all over my hand. This is the fourth ceramic coil head that has completely leaked flooded out on me like ridiculous. This is the third Heracles Pro tank and the fourth Heracles Pro coil head, ceramic coil head, that has just leaked like crazy on it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm following the directions. I've used at least a thousand and a half sub-ohm tanks. I know, okay, make sure the O-rings, put it in the base, make sure it's secure, do this, prime it, fill up the top, fill up the, you know, juice flow on, juice flow off, juice flow on, juice flow off. Believe it or not, as I'm dumping juice out of it, the juice flow control is off. It's been off for about two days now, and that's how I've been vaping it, with the juice flow control off. When it does vape, I'm going to try to vape. Oh, it's all over my nice M17. Son of a bitch. When it does vape, the ceramic coil head, I don't like it. I am not a fan of it. It does not fit the style that I like to vape. I like to take deep, hard toots on things. Like the V-God Trick Tank Pro, it hits like an RDA. I can just take a big old rip on it, and that's how I like to vape. With this Heracles Pro and the ceramic coil head, this is the tank, if it didn't leak, for vapors that take soft toots, that take like soft little, like just little ones. Because it gets rid of that gurgle that happens when you drag on it really hard. You take a soft little toot, you'll get some really nice flavor. Unfortunately, with the ceramic coil heads, I mean, you saw that. Shit was leaking all 
over the place, all over the place. Sense, why? Sense, why? Why did this happen? Okay, I'm just going to set this aside. We're going to cut it short. I cannot recommend the Heracles Pro Tank. I just can't do it. Like I said, that's the third actual tank that has leaked on me and the fourth ceramic coil head that has leaked on me. And this one was flooding out of the airflow holes. I mean, you saw it with the juice flow control closed. Sense has a history of making the best coil heads in the industry, in my opinion. Every other Sense coil head I've ever used has been nothing short of absolutely perfection. I love vaping on them. The only thing that I've ever said bad about Sense is this dumb Heracles Pro and the dumb Heracles Pro ceramic coil heads. I'm not doing something wrong. Something is wrong with these coil heads. All of them have leaked on me. All of the tanks I've used, all of the ceramic coil heads have linked on me. The 0.4 ohm non-ceramic coil heads, amazing. I mean, awesome vape. Smooth, swooshy, flavorful vape. Ceramic coil heads can eat a D. I cannot recommend this tank just because of those ceramic coil heads. They are so, so bad. And now I have to go wash off my Axis Vapes M17 mod because there's caramelized banana all over it. The tank is empty. It was full yesterday. So yeah, go figure. It's all over my hands. I need to wash my hands. So yeah, bye. Bye. Good riddance, Heracles Pro. Gone. Gone from the queue. Now this one I'm actually really excited about. Entering the queue this week. Right there. Oh, that's the Faro Drip Tank. I think we all know who makes this. Now I have purposefully been not using this just so it could enter the queue and I could really spend some really quality time with it. I put a alien in here. I put, no, I put a multi-core fused Clapton. It's like a quad core fused Clapton in here. The deck on the Pharaoh, I'm going to say this every time it's on video, the deck on the Pharaoh is unbelievable. It is so easy to build on. It is one of the most effortless decks that I have ever built on. I knock my airflow down to two, to two holes. <laughs> Still nice and swooshy, just a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, tight, a little bit more constricted. I have a uh, caramel corpse in here. I just dripped all over the place, so I'm just going to give it a vape. One thing I will say is that the Faro Airflow, it's loud. It kind of sounds like a wind tunnel, especially when it's on all three. It's loud. It's just loud. There's no way around it. Just super loud. But the vape I'm getting from it, very, very nice. It's got very little spit back. I, first thing I did was get rid of the anti-spit back drip tip. That's the dumbest thing ever. I, I can't stand the anti-spit back drip tip. So I just have a regular hollow drip tip in here. Um, I use I use Rip's trick of looking at your airflow, and he always says, keep your airflow facing away from you, right? It doesn't matter. You can have it facing you or you can have it away from you. It doesn't really matter. How cool is that purge though? Anyway, all you have to do is look in the top and see where your coil is and see where your wicks are. It's really easy to see. I drip on the wick side. So if the airflow is facing away from me, I tilt it to the right and I go, Bip, bip, dip, bip, 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 bip. And then I tilt it to the left and I go, bip, 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 dip, dip, bip, bip, bip. and then that's it. And that juice is going to go to those wicks. It's going to get down into the little tiny, tiny reservoir that's in here. And it's going to wick up to your, you know, to your coils. I've vaped this dry multiple, multiple times. The flavor on it, super nice. I'm going to turn it back down to two airflow holes though, because that's just how I prefer it. Still has a cool purge though. Great flavor, great performance. Keep in mind, this is a single coil build in here. You wanna see some serious vapor production from a single coil build? Use the Faro. single coil build in there. Kind of unbelievable, kind of unbelievable, kind of amazing. The only issue so far that I've ran into with the Faro is juice. 
around that seam right there, juice. Juice just happens. It kind of just appears out of nowhere. I don't unscrew this to drip. I don't unscrew this, drip my juice, and then screw it back down. I leave it screwed down all the time. There's a small black O-ring in there as well. For some reason, juice just appears. And I don't know why it appears. It just appears right around that seam. Hoping I can figure out a workaround for that. Maybe different sized O-ring or something. You're dripping your juice against the walls. So it's running down those walls before it goes into the reservoir. I'm not sure if this O-ring is too small. Maybe it just can't hold back the juice. The only con so far with the Faro, other than it's a little bit tall. I mean, that doesn't really bother me, but in a world where we have like these really super slammed atomizers and these low profile atomizers and tanks, a giant tall guy like this, eh, that could be off-putting to some people. It's not to me. I just love the quality of vape that I get from this. I am going to re-wick this today. Uh, I'm going to clean it all out. And uh, yeah, this is going to stick around for at least another week, maybe two weeks. It's definitely, you know what, I, when I get back from Europe, basically everything's going to be leaving the queue and everything's going to be coming back. All new stuff is going to be coming in because it's going to be two weeks gone at that point. So that first Tuesday Bro Tuesday video, or three weeks gone at that point, the first Tuesday Bro Tuesday video that I do, it's going to be everything leaving, all new stuff coming in. But yeah, Dude, I'm excited. I have been wanting to vape this, and I've, like I said, this new Q setup that I have, I purposefully don't vape stuff so that when it gets here, I can get excited about it and I can really focus and spend my time with this device. I've been really looking forward to vaping this like constantly, constantly on the reg. Super good. Super nice vape. I just wish it didn't have that leaky sort of juice situation on there. So yeah, let's wrap up this vape stuff stuff. Uh, what do I have next to do? Oh yeah, that's right. Viewer mail. Why did I just sing that? It's just viewer mail. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get really excited and I'm like, oh, let's do stuff. But sometimes I just need to calm down. Let's do some freaking viewer mail. Fellow named Matthew wrote to me and said, Hey Nick, my name's Matthew. We met at VCCT this past year. That's in Tampa, Florida. It was awesome to get to talk for a bit. I've been into your video since I started using e-cigs over two and a half years ago. Your love of Star Wars and all things metal made me made you super relatable to me. I work at an e-cig shop in Zephyrus, Florida. Yeah, like the water. I don't know what that means. And before the FDA stuff came up, I'd shoot people over to your videos to have some fun and learn about new products I wasn't sure of. Uh, back to the point though, I'm a vocalist in a couple of bands and at VCCT I had you listen to one of my bands and you seemed to dig it. As a metal fan, I'm always looking for new music to jam so I can only assume that you are as well. Here are a couple of links to my bands in case you'd care to check them out. If you want to shout out Vapor Unlimited and my bands, that would be sick. Not only, not at all necessary, stay metal, keep it cloudy, and may the force be with you. Absolutely. You know what? Let's just... Uh, Let's listen to one of these. He's got a metalcore band. I've never been a huge metalcore guy. Just a heads up. But we're going to try to listen to some metalcore here. Let me turn down my volume so it's not bananas. This band is called the Liliad. The L Iliad. The Iliad. I-L-I-A-D. That's Iliad, right? This is the Iliad. And it's starting off with like... Sure, it's a little genty. There's a little bit of gent happening there. Okay. Get rocking. You're 40 seconds in. There you go. Okay, so it's a little metalcore-y. It's a little bit genty. Um, sure, 
the Lil- the Iliad. Uh, I I I'll I'll listen to this. You know what? I'll listen to this. Good stuff. Awesome. You know what? Good. Yeah. Great. Very cool, Matthew. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for sending that my way. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to your band. I'm gonna check out your band. Uh, another fellow wrote to me. I uh, cannot pronounce his name. Uh, his name's John. Okay. He wrote, Hey Nick, love everything you do. I know you're a busy guy, but uh, I need some help. In your opinion, okay, your opinion is probably one I trust most. No, that's, you should never do that. I'm looking for a new travel work setup. I've only had a Segeli 150 and one atomizer for the past two years. Juices take up my whole vape budget most of the time. So of the small travel vape type guys, what is your favorite? Uh, the Mini Volt kit, the Nugget Gold Rush kit, or the Cuboid Mini? Those types of kits. Whenever you get around to it, uh... I would love you for it. Thanks so much. Keep up the amazing work. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, there are a lot of great little tiny kits. I have really, as far as like tiny, 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 tiny kits, I've really only used the Nugget. The Nugget mod itself is a great little device. It's a great, great little device. The tanks that come with the Nugget mods, not as great. Very, very leaky. I mean, sub ohm tanks... There's no reason why in 2016 sub-ohm tanks should leak at all. But these these ones that come with the Nugget and this Heracles Pro have leaked on me. Both of them have leaked on me just intensely. Both of them have leaked on me like crazy. In fact, the new one also that came from Movekin, uh, the Disguiser Nano, that tank leaked like you can't imagine. So for a travel setup, I would get some sort of reliable tank whether you're going to do mouth to lung or whether you're going to do clouds bro clouds get some sort of tried and true reliable tank not necessarily an rta but you could go down the rta road i would get something like something like a sub ohm tank that i really like that's established aspire atlantis version 2 i really like the v god trick tank i really like the e-leaf milo 3 really like those sub ohm tanks. I would probably grab one of those and I would probably grab some sort of single 18650 device, whether it's the, uh, the dagger. I really like the dagger. I really like the dagger. And there's some smaller dual 18650 devices that aren't gigantic. Like you could almost make the Sigilli 213 a travel device. And I know you're looking for something really, really tiny, but you don't really need to go really, really tiny. There's some nice small dual 18650 devices like the Segeli 213 or what is it actually? What a DJ LSB, LS, DJ LSB vapes say it was like a 155 or something like that. But yeah, look into the dagger. VO Tech makes the dagger. It's a nice six, 18, single 18650 device. It's small. If you're going to go down the tiny, tiny road, I don't have a lot of experience with the tiny, tiny devices. I know... Uh, Phil, Phil Basardo did a whole like week of like the tiniest, tiniest devices. So maybe check out his channel. He reviewed like six of them, I think all in one week. It's like the mini marathon. Like he, he, every tiny, tiny little thing. There's that little target guy as well. The target Vaporesso Nano or something like that. So Phil has way more experience with the tiny, tiny guys. Me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the tiny, tiny guys. I need a little bit more battery life, a little bit more power. So I would go, personally, I would go single 18650. Uh, I mean, all the way, single 18650. I think they're... uh, I think they're great. Definitely check out that dagger though from VO Tech. That might be something. That could be something that you're into. Let's ask. Uh, let's ask Scott. Scott. Uh, Scott wrote to me and said, "Hey Nick, first off, I have to say each video I have watched you and other vape related videos, and I must say, wow, why are you repeating yourself? Hey Nick, first off, I have to say each video I have watched you and other vapor related videos, and I must say each video." about a product leaves me drawn to the screen to learn each method and correct way to use. Your videos give me more knowledge and anticipation to try new tanks, coils, and flavors. Anyway, enough flattery. Enough flattery. I am a 16-year smoker, and I have been vaping for the last six months, and I have not touched a single cigarette since. Awesome. Congratulations. I'm I'm vaping strong and bringing more vaping to my town, trying to encourage vape advocacy in HR 2058. This hasn't occurred often, but on random nights, maybe one, then months later, and then again just a couple of weeks ago, I've had some strange dreams about cigarettes. Uh, yes, 
mostly involving myself having a pack and then casually smoking. This alarms me because I love vaping and I love the effect it has given me. Is my subconscious just giving me brain farts about past stuff or is big tobacco clawing at me from my dreams? <laughs> Like, like Freddy Krueger works for Big Tobacco. Like, like Freddy Krueger works for Altria. And he, like, shows up in your dreams. And instead of, like, knives on his fingers, he's just got, like, you know, 100 length cigarettes. And he's like, time for a smoke. Just food for thought. Maybe just my mind adjusting to the vape life. Keep vaping Nick and making videos, Scott. So, yeah, Scott, I used to not only dream about vaping when I first started vaping, but recently, yeah, I've dreamed about cigarettes. I had a dream very, very recently that me and my dad were smoking cigarettes. We were in the south somewhere on like a big like plantation with a big front porch, and we were sitting on the porch in rocking chairs smoking cigarettes. It doesn't make any sense to me. Dreams are just random impulses and chemicals in your brain. There's no rhyme or reason. Dreams don't mean anything. There's this whole like, oh, if you have a dream that someone's pregnant, that, that means that really someone's gonna die. No, it doesn't. It means that somewhere in your brain, in your subconscious, you were thinking about something about pregnancy and then you dreamed about pregnancy. Uh, before I go to Disneyland, I have dreams about Disneyland. I have dreams about flying when I'm about to travel. I have dreams about going to the beach before I'm about to go to the beach. If I eat a lot of sugar before bed, I'll have really bizarre dreams that don't make any sense, like cars with mailboxes attached to them. Dreams don't mean anything. It's just because you were a smoker for so long. I dream about smoking. Vapors dream about smoking. I've never woken up from a dream where I was smoking and I went, well, I gotta go have a cigarette. No, you go, oh, I'm so glad I don't have to do that anymore. So yeah, the FDA, Freddy Krueger working for Altria, he is not... Uh, <laughs> He is not coming after you at all. At all, at all. Anyway, um, a fellow named John wrote to me and said, Hello, Nick. My name is Jonathan, and you can call me John. I am a current viewer, subscriber of your YouTube, and I know you probably get asked this a lot, but I wanted to ask you for advice as to what mods would work best for first-time builders. I am currently looking at purchasing a Mage RTA to get me into, to get me into starting. But seeing as there are so many options out there, it's easy for me to get discouraged as my knowledge on Ohm's Law isn't the best as well. I don't understand one point to TC mods. I'm not new to vaping. I've just been using the same setup of an IPV Mini and a V2 Arctic Tank, and I feel like I'm quickly outgrowing it. I would hope you could give me some tips or at least point me in the right direction so I don't end up feeling too discouraged with purchasing a new mod. Yeah, absolutely. So... Temperature control, bro, don't even worry about temperature control. Um, you asked the wrong guy about temperature control. I can't stand it. I hate that shit. I think it's the dumbest, dumbest, dumb thing that was ever dumb in the dumb world. I hate temperature control. I don't use it. I, I'm, I, ju I, I hate it. 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 I don't use temperature control. So I can't answer any questions about temperature control. You mentioned the Mage RTA. So the Mage RTA, great little RTA. It is a great little RTA. A little difficult to build on if you've never built before because the deck rotates around when you're trying to build on it. Additionally, the Mage RTA only accepts round wire builds. I mean, doesn't only accept round wire builds. Don't leave me angry comments. Round wire builds just fit better inside the Mage RTA. It's got a little deck. It's got a small little deck in there and round wire builds. Yeah, so I have a feeling once you start building, you might outgrow the mage really quickly. You might be like, I want to put some fused Claptons in here. I want to put some aliens in here. You can't grow with something like the mage. You clearly are after a tank. Um, there are some good RTAs out there. Don't get me wrong. Some really good RTAs out there. The one RTA right now that I have been having a love affair with and I would highly recommend is the Billow version 2.5. E Sigity has them, Billow version 2.5, literally an unbelievable RDA. It checks damn near every checkbox that is required for me to enjoy an RTA. If you don't want to go down the RTA road, RDAs, dripping atomizers, are much, much easier to build. You just wick and you drip and, and that's it. There's no funny business. One of my favorite decks is the Twisted Messes Squared deck. 
big post holes, big, you know, big posts that come out and post holes. And it's really easy to build on just really overly easy to build on. I don't want to try to sell you my own RDA, but we built the recoil so that it would be easy to build on. The Goon has a little bit of a more advanced deck, but it's still fairly easy to build on. Look into RDAs maybe. If you get a velocity style deck, it would be ridiculously easy to build on like the tsunami like a velocity like a multitude the new watofo atomizers all have velocity style decks the freak show 2 has a velocity style deck velocity style decks are really simplistic to build on so that's what i would look into you know what i mean i don't know you so it's hard to recommend like one thing like i hate trying to recommend one singular product to fit one person. Just recently, Ilea texted me. She's like, hey, I need a new mod. What should I get? And I'm like, uh, like I can't do that. I, I know you really well. I don't know how you like to vape. I don't know what form factor you want. I don't know if you want lipos or dual 18650s or triple 18650s or single 18650s. I don't know what wattages you vape at. I don't know if you like a hot or a cool vape. I don't know if you hold your mod and press the button with your finger or you hold the mod and press the button with your thumb. I don't know if you use 24 millimeter atomizers or 22 millimeter atomizers. It's just there's so much that goes into picking out that like one singular perfect mod for somebody that it just drives me insane. So yeah, if you're into tanks, Billow version 2.5. If you're into drippers, anything with a velocity style deck, the recoil, the twisted mess is squared. Def no, not the goon. I'm going to take back what I said. <laughs> yeah, definitely not the goon, but any of the other ones I listed, absolutely. Um, just study up on Ohm's law. Ohm's law is it not as complicated as you think it is. All you have to remember when you're building, I said all, like I'm from freaking New Jersey. Maybe I'm channeling Mter. All. Why did I say all? All you need to know about for Ohm's Law is more wraps, right? More wraps, higher resistance, higher voltage, lower wattage. Less wraps, lower resistance, lower voltage, more wattage. That's all I go through in my head every time. If I'm trying to shoot for a specific resistance, like I was trying to build a, you know, a 0.5 for that squonker. Where's the fucking squonker? For the squonker in that Kennedy. And I had a dual core 28 gauge, room 40 gauge, cl fused Clapton. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm like seven, eight, I'm around a three millimeter. So I'm going to do nine. And I think the combination of the diameter and the wraps, and that will get me to where I need to be. So just go, there's a great website that's called the Steam Engine, where you can learn all about Ohm's Law, all about different wire types, uh, how many wraps you're gonna need to do to get to certain resistances, and uh, yeah, very cool. Very cool stuff, Jonathan. Thanks for writing in. Uh, 15 minutes. You know what? Nope, that's too long. That's too long. You can always send your viewer mails over to nick at grimgreen.com. If you want them answered on the show, uh, put viewer mail in the subject. Like, put viewer mail in the subject, and that way uh, I can reserve those for this program. There's not. That's not a guarantee that they'll get answered on this program, but that is... With how they'll get filed. I will reserve those strictly for this program. If you need a response right away, chances are you're not going to get it. I mean, I just, I try my best. I can't answer every single email I get. It's a, uh, it's a whole other thing. So what I'm going to do now, I haven't even prepared for this, but I would really, really like to taste some random juice. So I'm going to head over to Han Solo and just pick something to vape. So I went in Han Solo and I forgot this bag of juice uh, showed up the other day. They're like little little 15 mil bottles and I don't recognize the company. I don't recognize the name. It says uh, Q Vapor Labs, qvapor.com. It's V-A-P-O-U-R, hashtag demand purity. And so I don't know the flavor profiles of any of these. So I'm going to click over to their website, and I, I want to pick one. Like, I want to pick one that I want to vape. Uh, yes. Shop. Flavors and bottle sizes. Okay, okay. Dragon's Cloud. Oh, good. I'm getting texted. Hi, Nick from Daily Vape TV. Hi. You texted me in the middle of Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. Uh, dragon Fruit Blend. No, I don't want Dragon Fruit. North Shore. Uh, papaya. Ugh, no, not Papaya. No, Papaya's never good. 
Uh, papaya is always really bad. Tachyon. Crisp Asian pear. Ex with juicy jackfruit. I hope I have tachyon in here. Tachyon! Ba -ba -da -ba! Ba -ba 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 -ba! So, I got a freshly wicked Goon 22. Uh, just a simple round wire build on there. I do... I have this Goon 22 that I got in uh, in Houston, Houston, in Dallas, at the Dallas Vape Expo, and I decided I'm just going to keep it around. The flavor is so freaking good on it. I'm just going to keep a round wire build in here, and I'm going to use it for juices. I'm going to be constantly re-wicking this and re-wicking this and re-wicking this for juices. So here we go. Tachyon. Let me juice this up. The flavor profile of Tachyon is crisp Asian pear accented with spicy jackfruit. And I don't know what a jackfruit is, but I do love me some Asian pear. So we're going to try Tachyon. This is from qvapor.com. V-A-P- O U R vapor.com. It could be a British company. That's how the Brits do it. They say vapor like V A P O U R. So let's get this all going, Nick. Come on, you're wasting time. Two airflow holes, Goon 22. Two airflow holes, Goon 22. This is a 0 0.29, 75 watts. Uh, this is the, you know, the lost vape. Uh, Therion non-squonker version, much, much, this is the best DNA 75 I think I've used so far. Let's give it out. Let's give it a shot. Tachyon. It is spicy. There's a weird, weird spice component going on in there. Not like spicy like hot peppers or anything like that, but spicy like, like, a, like clovey nutmeg type of spices. There's a weird spice going on in there. It kind of reminds me of the Squid Dude Juice Jade. I don't know how I feel about this juice. And I know I usually say, oh, I can decide within like two toots if I like a juice or not. I don't know where this is going. I don't know where I like, I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I like this. Give me a second. Just would you give me one second? Okay, I think I'm going to say no. I think I'm going to say I don't enjoy this juice. It is an Asian pear. Um, Asian pears taste like normal pears. The difference is in the texture of it. So Asian pear, it's a pear. It tastes like a pear. But this jackfruit spiciness that's going on in there um, really freaking me out, man. It tastes like almost peppery. There's like a bit of like a peppery undertone. It's weird. I can't. It tastes like a pepper shaker. <laughs> like it tastes like pepper and plastic mixed with pear. Does that make any sense? Like it's a like it's not a strong pungent plastic, but it's like when you have an empty plastic bottle or a plastic bag and you smell the way the inside of it smells. That's what I'm getting from this. It's like a weird pepper plastic on top of the Asian pear. So Sorry. Wow. Bummer. There you go. Sorry, Q Vapor. Tachyon didn't knock it out of the park, but uh, maybe I can drip something on top of this. No, I don't do that. I'm a flavor purist guy. So we'll have to come back next week. Maybe next week we'll try another one from Q Vapor. We'll try a different one. We'll try that cloud breath. There's one called the Viking. All right. Next week, next Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, the Viking. We're going to vape the Viking simply based on the name. Yeah. Don't like it. I don't like it. Sorry. I just... uh. I just don't like it. So yeah, that's going to wrap up this Tuesday Bro Tuesday video. Don't forget, you can join me here every Thursday for the vlog. The vlog day, the infamous vlog. It's a whole lot of fun. We drink beer. We do shout outs. I do first impressions. It's just a whole grand old time. This is the last Tuesday Bro Tuesday video for possibly two weeks, maybe three full weeks. I will have other content in there. I'm doing a whole travel thing when I'm in Europe, so I'll still have plenty of content. But as far as Tuesday, bro, Tuesday goes, this is going to be the last one for at least two weeks, maybe three weeks, because I'm going to Europe. Let me just check real quack and quack. Ah, make sure I didn't forget anything. Nope. 
Nope, nope, nope. I think we're all good. Well, I'm gonna take my Finder 75 and my Faro RDTA. I can't, I can't not do the Rip Trippers voice. I'm gonna vape and I'm gonna edit video. And so, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me again, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday for the vlog, but that's what I got. Thanks so much, everybody. Let's keep on vaping.